This is Lone Star Politics from NBC5 and the Dallas Morning News. And good morning, everyone. I'm Chris Gutierrez with NBC5, along with Gromer Jeffers, political reporter for the Dallas Morning News. Good morning, Chris. You know, every time I see you, I think about barbecue, since you're our <laughs> resident expert. Did you Boots bring some? and barbecue. <laughs> That's right. Those are my two things. Hopefully, we we'll have time to talk about Tony Romo, too. Exactly. And you want to do yeah, some of that, maybe? Yeah, all right. All right, well, let's get to our first guest this morning, Representative Rafael Anchia, who's been outspoken about immigration issues. What are you hearing this morning from North Texas families about that? Well, we're getting a lot of calls into the office and, and call-in shows that we've been doing about how scared families are, not only with the executive order at the federal level, but also what's happening here at the state. I mean, you have parents who are, who are trying to make designations about who's going to take care of their kids if they're deported, uh, whether they're taking and dropping the kids off at school or they're going to work. There's a lot of fear in the community right now. So are, are you resigned to the fact that something is, is, is going to happen, something is coming along even worse than the executive order. And what do you do about that? So, listen, my criticism, I guess, oh, of uh, policies at the state level are twofold. One, you can't solve immigration at the state level. It has to be solved federally. Right. And, and, and it seems like Congress has been unable to do this for the last two decades, something we really need to uh, put our attention towards. The, the other thing is you, you only hear in the Texas Capitol about immigrants, but never about employers, right? And if everybody is taking e economics 101, this is about supply and demand. If we're going to talk about illegal immigrants, we've got to talk about illegal employers. If we're going to talk about sanctuary cities, we have to talk about sanctuary industries. What would, what would you say to, to people who would argue that some of these families should have seen this coming eventually? Sure. And, and there's no doubt that families uh, have, who live in the shadows, who, who work in our, in our businesses, clean our homes, build our homes, uh, cut our lawn, they contribute to our community, but at the same time, they're always scared. Mm -hmm. It's been ratcheted up with the election of Donald Trump and the efforts of Governor Abbott. I think the tension level is a lot higher. And while President Obama had tried to put some priority enforcement in place for nonviolent immigrants, uh, I, I think now everybody is scared because everybody's a target. Hardline conservatives say they broke the law. And so they should, if there are consequences, they should suffer them. What do you, how do you respond to that? Well, they certainly uh, entered on an undocumented basis. But again, if we're going to talk about breaking the law, we have to talk about not only the immigrant, but U.S. business that has an insatiable appetite for immigrant workers. And if you, if you don't die crossing the river, there are plenty of good U.S. Pay, good U.S. jobs and good paying jobs here in the United States. So we have to be honest about this discussion and not be hypocrites and only talk about the immigrants. Now, in a couple of minutes we have left, health care, the health, Republican health care bill unveiled Congress last week. What will be the impact in Texas, you think? What are you looking for in terms of uh, how to, you know, get uninsured people in this state on the rolls? Are you afraid that more people will be uninsured? Well, look, Republicans have been in control here in the state of Texas for about 20 years, and there's still no plan, right? You have uh, Texas is number one in uninsured uh, Americans. Uh, and even with Obamacare, where there are about a million Texans on Obamacare, uh, if that is repealed and replaced, what is the Republican plan? We're, we're, we're waiting to hear for, for, uh, from them on that. It doesn't sound like they have it solved in Washington. They certainly don't have it solved in Austin. What about the bathroom bill? What's next? Well, it is passing the Senate. Uh, it looks like there's been an affirmative vote of the Senate committee. I think it dies in the House. This is going to cost the Texas economy about $1.8 billion. Every uh, important chamber in the state is against it. The Texas Association of Business, the largest and most conservative business organization in this state, says it's a no-go. I think we kill it in the House. Yeah, and Strauss doesn't want it to, to speak or uh, quickly. CPS reform, do we get meaningful reform out of this session, you think? Two out of the three bills that have been uh, promoted by the uh, leadership have passed. We're waiting on the third one. We have to get it right. Hundreds of kids die in the custody of Child Protective Services. This is a crisis that's been going on under Perry and Abbott. We have to fix it now. Rafael right. Anchia, we do appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. You got it. Glad you were here. Coming up, 